Writing our first program is not just a big deal, it's a very simple task. In every programming, writing a first program is a very simple task. So in that programming language, I'm going to be showing you how we can write this programming, uh, our first program using that. So I just quickly want to let you know that the 90% of our code is going to be in between this void main and uh, this closing of curly brackets. So whatsoever that is going to be up here, I'm going to be talking about that later. But our program is going to be in between here because we are writing 90% of our code in this place. So to write our first program, I'll use what we call print. So in that we use print and there are some other languages that will use print. So in that I'll use print. So I'll say print and I'll open and close the parenthesis. So in this parenthesis, I'll add this. Then I'll say hello world. Then just remember that after writing your code, at the end of the line, just add a semicolon at the end of the line. So if you didn't add any semicolon, your code is not going to run. So you might see me forgetting to write um, or to add a semicolon. It's just a usual thing in programming. You might we might forget to add our semicolon. And uh, maybe one will discover that we needed to add it, we come back and add it. So if you see me not adding it, just know that it's just uh, a minor thing that do happen. I will still come back and add them later. So let me run this code and see. So in this place, in this place is where we are going to be writing all of our codes. And in this place, we are going to be having the output of our codes here. So our first program we wrote is hello world and here is the output which is hello world so if i still want to write some other things uh let me say i just want to maybe draw something here whatsoever you put in between this place after writing a print statement whatever you put in between this place is going to print out so no matter what so let's say maybe i want to print uh let's say uh a ladder uh, i don't know how this is actually gonna look but next i want to print a ladder so when i try to run this we have this this, this is just the h i just want to convert it to ladder so i can quickly come here copy this and i can come down then i will paste this again so no matter how many times we print this it's going to print how many times we pasted it i want to do it one more time okay so when i still run this code we have one two three four and here we have one two three four so i'm just taking this as a ladder and this is just all about right now our first program and our next our lecture will be talking about some other cool stuff that you needed to know uh, as a beginner in that programming language. Let's talk about data types and variables. So first of all, I will start with a data type. So what is a data type? Data types are the most fundamental features of programming language in that. The data type of variable is defined by its value. Where the variables are used to store value. Let me quickly explain more about variables. Okay, so variables is used to store the value and refer the memory location in computer memory. When we create a variable, the dat compiler allocates some space in memory. So today, the first data type I'll be talking about is strange. So strange is a data type. It is used in storing a test values. For example, I want to store a test value, so I will 
first of all start by calling a data type of string then i will also followed by the variable so the variable will be the name or whatsoever you want to store which soever piece of information you wanted to store at that moment so i will first of all come with the data type followed by the variable so i will use my variable as name then now say equal to so a data type of string and the variable a variable called name is an is equal to let's say uh, my name let's say frank then we enter a semicolon so semicolon is the most common thing in programming language so you might see me forgetting to add this semicolon and uh, at the end of the day i will try correcting some errors and adding them again all right let me quickly explain we have a data type here called strange and have a variable called name and what is what is inside this name it is frank so this frank is stored here so when we try to print name we will get the output of frank although we can hard code it and print frank straight but in a situation whereby you are typing maybe 100 lines of codes and you are calling names in different places maybe you have where the name is written in up to 10 places and you decided to change the name you start looking for the name one after the other but it's a very simple thing you can quickly come over here where you store the the value or uh, the variable you can come here uh, you can come to the variable proceed to the value you can quickly change the value so when you change the value everything works fine so for now let me quickly print name so that you are going to see that frank is going to be printed out so i'll click on run so as you can see we have frank frank is printed out right now but i can as well print frank that right here like i said earlier I can also print Frank. So when I do this, I still have Franks. So in a situation whereby we have many codes or uh, many places where Frank is being called, and at the end of the day, you decide to change the names, so you will not be, or you're not going to be looking for a way to start changing them one after the other. Let me quickly make an example here. So I'll just write a small sentence. I will say, my name is Frank. Uh, I am 25 years old. I will say the name Frank was given to me by my mom. was given to me by by my mom and I will also say my dad or I will say I love it so I love I love it when my parents calls me or yeah calls me Frank. So in this example, when you check very well, you will see that Frank appears in many places. Uh, let's say we have Frank here, we have Frank here, and we have Frank here. So if you want to change these values, maybe you want to change the name to Mike or whatsoever. So if you change this one after the other, it's going to work as well. But oh, that's a whole lot of process. So in this case, let's run this code. When we run this code, you can see we have Frank here, we have Frank here, and we have Mike here. Just because I changed this from to Mike, so I will quickly change this to Frank again. Then coming up here, I have a value here which I have stored as Frank. So for me to be able to call this 
uh, variable to display whatsoever value we have here I will change this frank and call this variable to display this so to do that I first of all clear this then I will type a dollar sign open a curly bracket then we'll type the variable in which we use in storing the value then we'll close our curly brackets so what did you just do here we call this variable here I know that the value of this variable is frank so when we try to run this code we are going to see that it's going to be frank so I will quickly copy this and do it to the rest of the place that as I have Frank coming over here I'll paste this coming over here too I'll paste this so let's run this code again and see so you can see that it's still showing Frank Frank and uh, Frank so when we come here and say let's change to my second name which is Wilson and I'll run this code again you see that my name has changed from Frank to Wilson so it's a very common thing that you need to understand have a basic knowledge of so that when you have a thousand lines of code and maybe you are writing uh, uh, a book that has an author or you are writing about someone where you have mentioned the name in, in many places you don't just have to be changing them one after the other so when you are writing your sentence when it goes to where when it gets to where you will type name you just have to call the variable and continue so that whenever you want to decide to change the name or maybe you decide to reuse the code for another project you can as well come over here and change it let me quickly show you something again that that, that is very common and uh, sometimes it's it's needed or uh, let's say sometimes it's, it's, it's important I just showed you a simple way to store a variable using a data type so um, let's say that you've written a lot of codes and it now gets to a point where we need to change the name but we don't want to come up here again and change this name here we just want to quickly change the name change what is whatever that is stored in this variable we just quickly want to change it we can as well let me we can come over here or maybe here anyway you can come here and type name equals to whatsoever name you want to change it to you can say frank again so what did i just do here i'm just trying to tell the computer that i want to change the value of this variable from Wilson to frank at the moment although that, that does not mean that whatsoever i have stored below this below below this should not change let the effect let it take an effect immediately after i've entered it so whatever i print inside here whatever i print or enter here it's going to call my name as frank not wilson so at this point if we try to print name if we try to print name you are going to see that my name is going to be printed as Frank and not Wilson anymore. Oh, sorry about that. I'm not supposed to enter this. So, so when I print name, let me quickly get rid of this so that you will not be confused. So when I print name, is still going to show as Frank. So getting back to the code I just removed, let me run this code again and explain something to you. You can see everything I wrote here that was under this variable, this string, uh, data type and variable which has a value of Wilson, displayed my name as Wilson, which you can see here. 
we can see here and we can see here so what now happened that we try to print name and it shows frank which is here so we told the computer that at the moment change the value of of name which is a variable change the value of this variable to frank so whatsoever you write here and print is going to be displayed as frank or whatsoever name you stored it with i will get rid of this i want to show you another cool store let me show you a cool store on uh, what you can still do there are still lots of cool stuff you can do with this uh, first of all i will type print name dot uh, i will say length name dot length so what am i trying to tell the computer to do i'm trying to tell the computer to print the numbers of alphabets yeah that's that's inside this variable so we have one two three four five six so we have six one we'll try to print name dot length we are going to get six nothing less than six and again other cool stuff we can do we can also say name dot contents we can say name dot contents uh, then we can we can say w so what did we just do here we try to tell the computer to check if this variable has uh, an alphabet or a letter of e on it so when we try to run this code they are going to get a true because we have w so uh, a true is an is a brilliant expression it's another type of data type on that the code is here to run because i think i'm having network issue because i'm working on online so we are going to get true when we enter a value or a word or a, an alphabet or text that's not inside of this you are going to see that it's going to be returned as false so a brilliant expression is either true or false let me quickly fix this network and i will show you what i'm, I'm talking about so when we run this code we are going to get a true response yeah because we just asked the computer to check if this variable the name variable has a value of w so it's just checking if this value has a w so when i change this to something else that that's not in in this value i'm going, going to get a brilliant response of first We have a little bit delay because of our network. We got a response of false because checking at this value and this name, we don't have any letter D. So we will still check S. We know we have S here. So we are going to get a true response because we have S here. So this is the basic of string data type. On our next class, uh, next video, I'm going to show you how we are going to be working on an integer. The next data type I'll be talking about is what we call integer and double. So integer is used in storing a numeric value that's a number value while double is still the same thing it's just the same thing but there's a little bit difference so the difference is that integer stores a numeric value of just one number y double stores a numeric value of decimal points two decimal points so for example i want to register a variable with a value of 
any number I wish to. Uh, maybe let me do something like this. Integer. Then I will say quantity. Say quantity equal to let's say three hundred. Then here I will say double. Sorry, double price equal to twenty point nine nine. So maybe you are trying to build a little e-commerce application and you want to set up price. You can use a data type of integer to store the number of products you have and you use a data type of double to store the price. So quickly, let's do something with this. But before I go, I move on. Let me quickly explain this to you more and more so that you understand it. We used a data type of it. This int is also an is, is called integer. In full meaning, it's integer. While in short form, it's called int. That if you want to use it here, then we we first of all call the data type of int, followed by a variable, the variable name in which you want to use whatever name you want to use. It doesn't mean then followed by the number of products. So we see integer we are trying to tell the computer that we are storing a numeric values then we name the values whatsoever thing we want to name it then we now say the value whatsoever that's inside here will be equivalent to it's 300 not equivalent it's 300 then we did the same thing here we have the double the the variable and the price so quickly we can decide to do something like this as well before we sh before i show you let me quickly print this so that you are going to see that it's going to show 300 so i will start by typing print quantity print quantity enter a semicolon so when I run this code, it is going to print 300. If I come here again and also say print price, we have 320.99. So this is what we have here now. So let's assume that you are building an e-commerce application where you want to set up the quantity of any product you have and also the price you can use this data type and which is integer and double to set up your quantity of products and the price so should in case that just like what we did before should in case that you have any products that you want to you want to add to here but you don't want to come over here and edit it again so there are ways you can still do it so let's quickly get rid of this you know here we'll print the quantity which is going to print 100 so if we should come here at the bottom of this place right now and type quantity plus plus they will enter our semicolon we are trying to say the computer that we are adding an extra one quantity to the list of products we have so when i go ahead let me copy this code when i go ahead and print when i go ahead and print quantity at first it's going to show quantity plus plus i'm sorry it's going to show quantity which is 300 then remember that we added this code here which we, we told the computer to add just one to the list of uh, to the to the value we have before so once we come down here again and print quantity after adding this quantity plus plus we are going to get 
300 and at the same time we are still going to get 301 so let's check if it's, if this is true so that's true we got 300 which is this one so after adding one we got 301 another cool stuff we can do inside here is that maybe you don't just want to add one product um let's say you have up to 100 more products to add and you just really want to add it you can come down here you can say quantity quantity equal to quantity plus then the number of new products you want to add so i'll just add 100 and i'll add my semicolon so i'm going to print quantity let's print quantity first when you print quantity you are going to see that sorry. we are going to see that it's going to add together the list of commands you are giving this computer before adding this command so initially we have initially we have our initial number of products which is 300 then we we came down here and added one to the list of products we have before then we printed it out which which is what which showed us 301 it's going to show us 301 if we still print it again then after that we still came down here again and we added a total of 100 to everything so it's going to be 401 this plus extra one we added here making it 301 plus this 100 making it 401 so when we run this code we'll see the output so we have the output here the first one which is 100 which is what we printed here the second one sorry 300 the second one which is 301 which is what we added here and printed it out so using this then the last one which we added extra 100 to the product which we printed out here so the same thing we can still do the same thing to double to this double which is price so you can quickly change all this to price and we we'll come here and uh, see price plus plus just like what we did before you can say price plus plus then you can add the computer to print price then we add the price together Price. So when we run this code now, what we are working on is on this price. We are no longer working on the quantity. So when we run this code, this is what we are going to have. So initially we have 2.99. Then we added extra one using this. We now have 21.99 until we added extra hundred. That is when we have 121.99. So that was, that will be all for this type of data type, and we shall be proceeding on another data type, which is called the Boolean expression. So see you on the next video. Let's talk about Boolean expression. So just like I've showed you other data types, we also have the data type we call Boolean expression. So, like I said earlier, we use Boolean expression to identify true or false. You can decide to check if something is true. You can try to check if they are false. So, for it to be able to start using Boolean expression, we will first of all start by typing bool. So, the short form for this Boolean expression is bool. Then, after typing the data type, is going to be followed by the variable you want to store it with so i will store it with maybe female 
then I will say equal to false yeah that's because I'm not a female uh, sorry I'm not a female so I'm just trying to so what are we trying to do we are trying to check if I'm a female or not so when I try to print when I try to print this female it's going to return false because originally I have set the value inside this variable as false so when I run this command I'll get a false response if I also come here and change this to true I will get a true response so as we are moving on I'm still going to explain more I will use this to do and uh, build some cool stuff which will give you some more understanding or knowledge about how this bool works I'm gonna read about previously we've been telling the computer to always print out something we just command the computer to do whatsoever we want the computer to do so in this lecture i'm going to be teaching you how we can get an input from a user so without wasting much of your time let's go straight to the point so before we can get an input from a user we need to declare the type of input we want is it a string input which is for text uh, is it a, an integer input or whatsoever so right now we'll be talking about string input which is a test so i'll say string then we need to add a question mark so this question mark is to is, is checking if it's null level or not because we are just trying to collect an input from a user you need to check if it's null level or not because the user might decide to enter uh something or decide to leave it empty so once we we enter the question mark we give space then we need to declare the variable the name we want to give whatsoever the user wants to type the name we want to store the user input with so i will say name then the value of this name i'll just say equal to the value should be what the user enters so there's something we call standard input which is stdin but before that we need to come over here and import what we called that io the that io io stands for input and output so uh, so i'll start by typing import then i'll say that io then i'll enter my semicolon here So when I come down here, we have declared that is a extreme data type we use, and the variable is what we call name. So we want to use this name here to store whatsoever the user enters. So we we'll say stdin, which stands for standard input. We we'll say dot read line sync. So this is read line sync. Then we open and close parentheses then here we can add our semicolon but before that we need to try to let the user know what we want the user to enter we can come here hit enter then we can print a text telling the user to enter a name Then at the end we enter our semicolon so when we run this code we are going to see that this is enter a name 
then inside this place we can see that now we can be able to type here we can be able to type or so if i want to type so i'll just enter my name i'll say frank so when i hit enter the code stop executing why because that's the end of the program after entering the name there is no other thing it's going to do we did not ask the computer to do any other thing so in the case whereby we want the computer to do something after entering this name we can as well print the name the user have entered so you can come here and say print open and close parentheses we can say uh, something like this you can say your name is then here we enter a dollar sign we open a curly bracket then we call in these variables we registered here so the variable we registered here is name so we we'll just say name then we close our curly bracket then at the end we add our semicolon or before we say uh, we can just say welcome welcome so when i run this code again it will ask me to enter my name so i'll say frank so when i sorry so when i hit enter it says welcome frank so we declared a data type of string giving the variable which we call name so in this variable we use the variable to store whatsoever the user will put here so whatsoever the user put here is going to be stored in this variable which we call name then after this we now print a message that says welcome then we're now calling this variable using this dollar sign curly bracket then typing what we have here in the next video i'm going to be showing you how we can be able to collect an integer data type from a user um it's not gonna be the same it's just a different thing so in the next video i'm going to be showing you how we can collect an integer input or data from a user Thank you. Before I move to the next lecture, which is integer and double input, I quickly want to show you something. We printed this variable here, which stores the user input using this dollar sign and curly bracket. We can as well print this without using this curly bracket and dollar sign only if we don't have this here uh, maybe we don't want to add any other text or words inside the same place that's when we can just print only this name without including a curly bracket so like i said earlier because there are some other things we are writing that is why it is a special character so we need to use this dollar sign and curly bracket to call this so we can see i can still come at the back of this i can still write some other thing we can say welcome welcome the user inputs whatever the user inputs uh, i will say we are pleased to have you here okay so when we still run this code again you can see that when i enter my name as frank and when i hit enter it says welcome frank we are pleased to have you here okay so there are some situations in which i can just print only this frank without adding any uh what was it called without adding any curly bracket or dollar sign so i could i could have just said print name oh sorry i'll say print name then i'll just add my semicolon so when i get rid of this and run the code again you see that it's only going to print the name or whatsoever i enter it just printed the name which is frank if i run this code again and enter any other name let's say wilson it's going to 
return Wilson. Then in a situation whereby you just want to write some other stuff, maybe welcome Frank or whatsoever, welcome or whatsoever. That is when we need this. So here I will add this, then I'll say welcome. Then at the end here, I will still add this again. So when we print this now, we are not going to get whatsoever that is stored in here because we did not uh we did not use those special characters to write this name. So when I hit enter here, he just said welcome name. Are you getting it? So when I then come here, add a special character which is dollar sign, add a curly bracket, also come here and close the curly bracket. So when I then print this, we have uh, our name printed out. So it says welcome Frank. I'll move to the next uh, lecture which is uh, integer collecting the user inputs for integer and double so i will say int then i'll add a question mark to check if it's not level and i will give it any variable name so i can say num1 and i'll say num1 is equal to then i will say int dot pass Int dot pass and I'll open the parenthesis. Then inside this parenthesis, this is where I am going to call this uh, standard input, which is stdin. So let me quickly show you. Uh, uh, I'll say standard input. Standard input. So which which is also stdi n so here what i'll do is inside this place i will then say stdi n dot read line sync so this read line sync here then open and close parenthesis then now this code is not going to run it's going to be returning error so why is because this is not null level remember when beginning we'll just check if it's not level so because it's uh, an integer or a double stuff we need to check if it's not level or not so at the end here before closing this we can come here and enter an exclamation mark so we'll enter this here and at the end here we we'll enter our semicolon so we can just change this to enter a number okay so when we run this code it will ask us to enter a number and when we enter 13 nothing is going to come out nothing is going to show because we did not ask the computer to do any other thing after executing this code so when i hit enter it stops executing nothing happens again so i'll quickly come down here and print it out and say print uh let's say we we'll say your number is number one your number is then we we'll use the special sign of dollar then we we'll come here and say number one then at the back here we'll add our semicolon so when we run this code again and we enter 13 so you say your number is 30 so it's just a common thing and a basic something that we needed to understand in computer pro um that programming then talking about a, a double data type you can as well come here and change this to double then we'll come down we also change this one to double so when we we'll try to run this code again oh so remember that this uh, letter type has to do with two decimal numbers. So I will say 3.5. So when I hit enter, it says your number is 3.5. Uh, so that's just all for this.
check out the next lecture where i'm talking more about all these and where i am using them to do something that is more advanced in this section i'll be talking about a conditional statement which has to do with if s and s if so for now i will start with if and s so let me quickly do something that is somehow uh, tricky let's say tricky or advanced so let me register name instead of to be typing this i can easily copy from the one i've typed before I still paste it here, then I'll just change this variable and change the value. Yeah, then I want to collect an input from user that we are going to check if the input the user enter is equivalent to the to these uh, variables, these values we have set here. So let's say if the user have entered an input and the input the user enter is equal to this. Let's say we are going to tell the user that you are you maybe you are our member or we have your record, something like that. So quickly I will start by asking them to enter their name. So I will start with the print statement, which I'm going to say print. enter first name then I will come here and uh, don't forget that I will also use a string to register their inputs I will use a variable to register their input which is string then what I'm going to store it with username one equal to standard input stdin dot read line sync dot read line sync open and close parenthesis then we can add our semicolon then at the bottom we can just copy this one as well then we come here sorry about that we come here and do the same thing can just you change this one to second name then this one to user name two sorry user name one user name two so what am i trying to achieve with this i have stored the first name here with name one which is frank i have stored the second one which is wilson so we now allow the user to input their name so we, we we use the variable to store whatever the input here and the variable name we name the variable username one so we will check if username one is equal to name one and also check if username two is equal to name two so to achieve that we can come down here then we we'll proceed and we'll say if we open and close parenthesis then inside here we will now check if name one is equal to we we'll use double equal to then we we'll check this user name one user name one, which is this one so we said we are just trying to say if name one which is this which is what we have here is equal to user name one that means if what the user is trying to enter is equivalent to this that is what we are trying to check then we can come here and uh, open and close our curly bracket we we'll hit enter then we can come down here and come down here and say 
print we sorry print we have your record then open and close this one they will come down here and see else we open and close parentheses i will now check it again now see print s sorry yeah we open and close parentheses curly brackets the next side here we can see print we are sorry we don't have your data don't have your data so what am i trying to achieve here oh i made a mistake here i'm not supposed to add this parenthesis so what are we trying to do now we are just trying to check if whatsoever the user enter in here is equivalent to what the user enter here so we now say if that is true print we have your record else which means if that's not true print we are sorry we don't have your record so first of all i will start by entering a true value so i will enter frank followed by wilson when i run this code it, it says we have your record let me run this code again with a false value i'll just enter wilson in the second one i'll enter frank is it we are sorry we are sorry we don't have your <coughs> record so i can use, i can as well tell you that if we run this code again and enter the first name as frank and enter the second name as anything else we are still going to get we have your record i will explain why the reason why is we are only checking this one and this one we have not checked the second one so that is why we are getting we still have your record even after we entered a wrong input here so to achieve that we are going to use what we call else if so i'm going to continue this in the next video so in the next video i will implement that else if so that you are going to know how you are going to be placing this correctly okay we are going to be talking about else if statement but before i use else if statement i want us to check if the two input from the user is equivalent to what we have stored in these variables so we have also already checked this one we checked if whatever the user enter here which is here is equivalent to what we have here so what we'll do next is after typing this first command we we'll give space and type and symbol twice and and then we'll come again and say name two double equal to username 2 double equal to username 2 so when we run this code let's enter it accordingly and say frank which we have here and followed by wilson which we have here then i'll say wilson so when i print this it says we have your record but when i enter i have to run this again when I enter Frank as the first name and I enter maybe any other name and uh, I'll say George when I print this it says sorry we don't have your record so that's when I have this S statement this S, S shows we are sorry we don't have your data then this one if whatever we've commanded here is true let it print whatsoever we have here all right we'll be talking about else if
command and how and how they works so these are very basic and the most common things in programming and it's a very very important thing that we need in programming so i'm going to get rid of this pardon me i'll get rid of this so quickly i'll do something like this i'm registering a variable which is strange then i'm going to give it name one then i'll say equal to i can't do it at my name so i'll still go with frank so when i come here i will also register another string so i will easily copy this one and i'll come down here and i'll paste this i will change this to two and i will change this to wilson Wilson. then i want to run a conditional statement here so i'll see if i will open a close parenthesis i'll say if oh sorry before i run that statement i need to collect an input from a user so i will start again with another string i'll say string so i'll call it uh, let's say yeah i'll call it just like before user username one which is equal to standard input dot read line sync standard input dot read line sync then open and close parenthesis we add our semicolon but before this we need to tell the user what we want them to do so we are going to print so we'll say print let's say enter first name or yeah enter name or we'll just the enter name enter name yeah so we are going to run a statement at the bottom yeah i'll hit enter we run a statement here we we'll say if open and close parenthesis we will now say name one equal to user username one we'll open up close curly bracket we'll say print we have a record So we just checked if name one is equal to name one. So we will run another conditional statement to check either if the user enter Wilson. You know, my name is Frank and I'm also Wilson. So the user might decide to enter first name or second name. So we are just trying to check even though the user enter first name, let's say the user is right. Even though the user enter second name, the user is right. So for us to also check if the user enter the second name, we'll see come down here and say else if then open and close parenthesis. Oh, we are not supposed to enter this here. Close it. So we're supposed to enter this here. So as if we enter our uh, curly brackets then we hit enter then we'll come inside here and run another command we also see 
name two. You see, name two is equal to user name one. username one which is this then we'll come here and say print we have your record just like we did before we we'll add our semicolon then there are two possible things here it's either they enter the first name or they enter the second name so each name they enter here we, we, we have run this and tell the computer that this thing they enter is correct it's either they enter their first name or they entered their second name so there is only one possible thing left here eh? so we can come here and say else sorry about that you can say else We enter our curly brackets, then we'll see print. We don't have your record. We don't have your record. So let's run this code. Let's run this code and check. So I'll start by running this code. So let's enter a true value. I'll enter my name as Frank. So it says we have your record. If I want to enter my name as Wilson, it says we have your record. Then if I enter any other name that is not my name, maybe I'll enter Moses. You see, we don't have your record. So this is just the basic things. We just checked if there are two possible things here. Yeah. Then if they are not possible, we throw an else statement to tell the user that sorry, we don't have this. So with this, we can proceed in building more advanced applications so in the next video we'll be talking about how we are going to be building an advanced calculator i'm waiting for you in the next video on our last video we have talked about if x and s if statement and we have also built a basic calculator which can be able to add two numbers together so in this video i'm going to show you guys how we can build a smarter calculator which can add subtract multiply and divide or and many other cool stuff that a calculator can do so let's let's move on first of all i uh, will have to print welcome to my basic calculator It's no longer basic, I will say advanced. Then I will follow by telling the user to enter first number. Then I will call an input to allow the user to type in something. So I will start by an integer variable, just like I showed you guys earlier. So I will say integer. I will call it num1 equal to int dot p e s p e r s e which is pass open and close parenthesis 
and I will start by putting STDIN, which stands for standard input dot read line sync. Read line sync, open and close parenthesis, then I'll come here and enter the null check, then I'll enter my semicolon. I quickly need to correct it. This has to be in uppercase. Yeah. So we have given the users the opportunity to enter their preferred number. Then the second thing is to ask the user to enter an operator. So operator is just like maybe addition, subtraction, multiplication, and whatsoever. So we just have to register a string that stores the operators that the user enter then I will name it OP OP equal to STDIN dot read line thing now close parenthesis uh, semicolon so we did not ask the user to enter anything before this so we just have to prompt them to enter something so to do that we just say print see enter operator so this op means operator we use this op to store whatsoever the user entered here so the next thing is to ask the user to enter the second number so i'll just have to copy this we did earlier i will come down here and i'll paste it i just have to change this one to num2 so we've already set what we wanted so the next thing is to run a conditional statements that checks the type of operator that the user enter so you can quickly show the user the kind of thing we needed from them maybe the kind of operator we needed, for, we needed from them we can say plus minus uh sorry division and and so on So from the bottom here, we now start by writing an if statement. So we say if we check this op here. So we say if open and close parenthesis, come here, open and close curly brackets, hit enter, then we we'll come back here and say if op is equal to, then we we'll say plus if op is equal to plus we come down here and say print can say num one plus num two went our semicolon so what did we just did we just checked if the operator the user enter is minus if it is sorry if it is plus then if it is plus we now have to add the two numbers that they input together then print out the output to them so i'll proceed with the next step then the next step is s if so that is if we can also call it otherwise or we can say or so i'll say else S if sorry S if OP equal to we'll say minus we come here our curly bracket then we'll say print num1 minus num2 
enter our semicolon. So we still have to do the same thing, but let me just copy this. I have to copy it. Then we'll still call me again. We'll paste it. Oh, sorry. I'll copy this. I'll paste it here. So we'll see else if let's use division this time around print this one created by this one uh, which other operator you can as well come down here again do the same thing change this one to this then we'll come here and save this then this is just the list of operators we are adding then if you are done adding your operators you know there is only one thing left again that means if the user did not input a supported operator so you can just say else you can say else open and close your curly bracket hit enter then you see print invalid operator and enter our semicolon so let's try and run this code and see what we will get so when i run this code i'll get welcome to my advanced calculator and it says enter first number so i will say 20 i'll hit enter see enter operator so i will say plus then enter i'm sorry i did not i just copied and i did not edit so this is supposed to be a second number so i can quickly come here and change this to second so i will run the code again so 20 plus 30 so we got 50 so when we still run the same code and say 20 maybe 30 and we'll say minus we'll say minus uh, let's say 10 we have 20 and we will still do the multiplication or whatsoever uh, division not multiplication. I did not even add multiplication here. You can try to add it if you want. So when I say 20 divided by uh, 5, what do we get? We got 4.0. Then what if the user enters an operator that is not supported? That is why we have else print invalid operator. So I'll enter 20. I was the uh, hey, multiplied by you know I did not register the multiplication here yeah? they multiplied by 10 definitely we are going to get invalid operator it is because we did not register this here so this is just the beginning step in writing this kind of uh, let's say advanced calculator it's very simple it just takes a lot of time just keep practicing and practicing and practicing until it gets to your head thank you very much i'll see you in the next video welcome back guys let's talk about functions so i'll start by explaining functions what is function functions are the building of readable maintainable and reusable codes so when you are writing a function you are writing the function because you just want to reuse the code or you maintain the code at any moment of time so let's write some functions here i will start by getting rid of this or let me see i will start by copying because i'm still gonna use them so i will cut it off uh, i will enter let me save it here I 
up here. So initially we when we started this that program or whatsoever we printed uh, the first thing we printed was hello world followed by a triangle so right now I just want to print something similar to that again let's say I'll print a ladder uh, so I'll start by writing print then inside here I'll have something like this something like this then something like this again and I'll add my semicolon so I will have to copy this and reuse them again but I can put some make it to look more neat Oh, one more so when we run this code we are going to have this ladder printed out oh sorry about that I needed to correct something I did not end the comment so and we are going to talk about this comment of 18 later so I will quickly have to end the comment okay so let, let's run this code again okay as you can see we have this ladder here in a situation whereby you don't want uh, to be doing this multiple number of times and you don't you just want your code to look neat all you have to do is to create a function for it so that you can reuse them so um, let me quickly so what you would do in order to create a function is to come over here hit enter it must be outside this main, this void main. So start by typing void. So maybe you can give it anything. You can say ladder, or you can yeah, you can say ladder. Sorry about that. You can say ladder. Open and close parentheses. Then come here. Open and close curly bracket. We hit enter. Then we can come here and cut our code or copy anyone then come back here at the middle of in, in between this void and this closing of curly bracket so we can paste this ladder so when, when we try to run this code we are not going to get any output I'm sorry I need to correct this we are not going to get any output I need to correct this. It's not looking nice at all. So let's run this code and see. We have no output because what we just wrote here now is inside our functions. So for this to be able to display, we need to call the function inside this main uh, this thing. So for us to do that, all we have to say is we register this function as a ladder so we just have to call this ladder here what we are going to do is we just have to type ladder open and close parentheses then our semicolon then when we run this code you can see that we have our ladder here so it's just a basic something that needs to it's a compulsory thing that we need to learn and understand in that because we just want to store our code and use them we don't just want to be typing and typing so in a, in a situation whereby I want to write 10 of these I already have one two three four five if I want to write 10 of these I will no longer have to write draw it 10 times again or times 10 again I will just have to copy this and I will paste it here just two so when i run it you see that i have 10 already so it's just a basic something i will need to understand so let me quickly show you something the calculator we did before i want to copy it so i'll start from here i want to copy the calculator we did before because i want to use it then i will close this function I will clear this I mean 
then maybe I will name it calculator so then I can paste the code inside here this is just the code so when I come down here I'm not going to use this ladder again I will just say calculator yeah then open and close parentheses and my semicolon so so I can get rid of this it's no longer needed so as we all can see just like I showed you earlier without me calling the functions inside this main I'm not going to get any output there is no output at all until I call this function here you see that I have an output that is runnable so this is all about functions saving your code trying to reuse them in in a future or anytime you needed to or there are some special purpose that we need to use them for so that's going to be all for now regarding functions as time goes on we'll have to do something more advanced using function i'll see you in the next video in this video i'm going to be talking about loops so i'm starting with a while loop so what's the while loop the while loop executes the instruction each time the condition is true in other words the loop evaluates the condition before the block of code is executed so if after the evaluation if it, the return was not true or the return is not true it's not going to evaluate it's going to move on to the next block i notice this is getting more complicated but let me quickly start with the while loop i will first of all register a, an int, uh, a variable of i i'll say integer i equal to zero then I'll come down here and say while open and close parenthesis I'll say while i is less than five then I'll come here and open and, glo and close curly brackets so while i is less than five print i Then I'll come down here and increment it and say i plus plus. So with all that I just did, first of all I registered an integer variable which is which I set the value to zero. Then I come down here to check if i is less than five. Normally checking if zero is less than five, so i is equal to zero. We are checking if i is less than five. So if that is true, we print i. Then we come down here to increment it. So after this incrementing, the, it goes up here again and add one to this. So this zero change to one. So it's going to be, it will run the code again. If one is less than five, it's going to print i. So this is going to print from zero to four. When we run this code, we see we have zero to four then if at all i did not increment it here it's going to return what is called infinite uh response or let me see uh, yeah infinite i will just call it infinite response or let's say infinite um loop so what's that what is this infinite loop loop once i clear this and run this code it's going to keep repeating the instruction without stopping so this can end up breaking your server or this can end up breaking whatsoever you are working with so when i try to run this code again you see that it will keep writing the code again and again and again and again again and again without stopping so that is why we come down here to increment it so i hope that uh, that's understandable but if you don't understand it you can go through this again you can do it on your own repeatedly until you get it so for a quick recap again i register a variable of an integer which i set a value to zero and i come down here and see if at all i is less than five which is if at all is zero is less than five print i 
then now I then come down here to increment it and say I plus plus that means I'm adding one to this I so from here it goes up again to add one to here which is this value here have changed to one so it's still saying while I that means y1 is less than 5 print I so that's just it that's all in our next video we'll be talking about a for loop and that's a very big topic again i can't wait to see you there thank you